Let's spend a minute or two exploring the Lorentz factor, which is often uh, given the symbol gamma, Greek letter gamma. So just remember it's 1 over the squared, 1 minus v squared over c squared. Came out of our, our light clock analysis as the, the key factor in the time dilation equation in terms of moving clocks running more, more slowly. But the question arises, of course, is why don't we see this in everyday life? And the, the, the reason we don't see it is this v squared over c squared factor. Uh, if this is small compared to 1, then this is pretty much 1 over 1, and gamma is about 1, and we don't see any difference. The, the elapsed time on a moving clock is the same as elapsed time on an identical stationary clock in terms of how precisely we can, can measure it. So what we've done here is just list some speeds. And then the, um, the results for gamma for each of those speeds. And it, it's a useful and or fun exercise for you just to plug in some numbers here, do the calculations, and come out with your own values of, of gamma. But uh, here they are. So speed 0, we've done this before. Then v is 0, so this is just 1. 1 divided by 1 is gamma is 1. So no effect if the two clocks are actually right, right next to each other. If we have a speed of 0.5 kilometers per second, which is 1,800 kilometers per hour, uh, and uh, if you think in terms of miles per hour, it's about 1,000 miles per hour, and roughly the speed, say, of a supersonic jet. Okay, so that's pretty fast in our ordinary experience. If you see a supersonic jet going by at that speed, is you know the, the speed of sound is about 700 miles an hour, depending on atmospheric pressure and a few things like that, and therefore you'd definitely be getting a sonic boom out of this, but look at what the gamma factor is, okay? You know exactly how many zeros we got there, but it's, it's way out here in the, I think this is probably about 100 billions right here and, and on. So even at supersonic speeds, very, very small difference between, uh, in terms of the clocks uh, being measured, moving clock versus a clock on, on the, the ground, as it were, a stationary clock. Although, I should say that they've actually done experimental tests where they've had two identically prepared atomic clocks, so very accurate clocks, and they kept one on the ground. They put one up in an airplane, essentially a jet. Not, I don't think it was a supersonic jet, but just a large jet. So it was flying at uh, certainly seven, several hundred miles per hour, kilometers per hour, uh, 600 probably in that range, 600 or 700 miles per hour, uh, maybe a thousand or so kilometers per hour. And they were able to see a difference, actually, when they brought the clock, the clock that was traveling back down again, the clock that had moved, and compared it to the original clock. Now, they also had to take into account a whole bunch of other uh, things in that experiment, including gravitational effects and the general theory of relativity. But using the, the results from the special theory of relativity, they were built into that experiment as well, and it was, was confirmed there. Some other speeds here. Point zero, now we're going to switch to point zero zero one c Okay, so tens, hundreds, thousands. This is one one thousandth the speed of light, about 300 kilometers per second, or um, in terms of miles per hour, it's uh, what is it, about 190 miles per hour, something like that. I think around 200 miles per hour, not quite 200 miles per hour. So obviously, uh, you know, very fast. I'm, I'm sorry, not miles per hour, miles per second here. Okay, 300 kilometers per second about uh, 190 miles per second, okay? So we're not talking about a fast race car here. We're talking about something, you know, uh, getting into, say, rocket ranges and things like that uh, with this. Or even rockets, you know, aren't going 200 miles per second typically. You know, maybe you could get up there. Uh, and look at the gamma factor, okay? Uh, again, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Uh, millions, it looks like it's in the 10 millionths place there in terms of the effect. So again, very, very small effect. And then as, as we increase the speed, you can see what happens. So now we go up to one-tenth the speed of light, 30,000 kilometers per second. Okay, 30,000 kilometers per second. Uh, this is probably a little less than the circumference of, of the Earth at the equator. Um, I know it in miles, it's 24,000 miles approximately. So um, it's going to be a little more than this, but roughly once around the world, give or take a little bit. And that speed in one second, and gamma factor 1.005. And then as it goes up half the speed of light, now we're sort of getting someplace where we could 
see some see some effects certainly not that you couldn't see it before but they're pretty small 1.2 there nine tenths the speed of light an object moving at nine tenths the speed of light 270,000 kilometers per second roughly 2.3 for the gamma then 0.99 see 99% percent of the speed of light 7.1 and then 0.9999 c 49 there 71 so it does go up fairly rapidly as you get to um, speeds very close to to the speed of light and of course if as we mentioned if you have v equal to the speed of light you get infinity there which would then therefore imply some sort of an absolute limit you can't quite ever get there okay so that just gives us a sense of when we're talking about relativistic effects at least for special relativity most of the time we're going to be dealing with things if we're actually going to see any effects with uh, speeds at about half the speed of light or greater. So somewhere half the speed of light up to you know, 0.9 C, maybe a little higher than that. Um, whether we can get those speeds, that's another matter. We can certainly generate speeds like that and even higher in particle accelerators. And that's where you really see relativistic effects. In fact, to design current day particle accelerators, you have to take the special theory of relativity into account to get them to work right. So this is a very practical matter for the engineers and scientists who are working on, on those matters. So uh, just a little bit exploring the gamma factor, the Lorentz factor, gamma, give you an idea of when it actually becomes a, a larger factor in terms of the, the speeds involved.